Now, the NPP caucus in Parliament makes another attempt and perhaps a final move to reassemble Parliament to consider what has long been described as urgent matters in a letter cited by Ghana Tonight's Majority Leader Alexander Penyomakin asks Speaker Alban Bagbin to recall the House to address critical government businesses. Now, this is the third time Penyomakin makes this request on the speaker, the previous two times, he and his caucus failed to show, uh, to show up over disagreements of certain places and a lack of statement of business, a situation that forced the speaker to adjourn the gathering. Now, as is expected, we want to show you some of the crucial government business matters to be considered as the NPP caucus, uh, led by the majority leader Alexander Apenyo uh, Makin, make another request on uh, the Speaker of Parliament. Now, the request for tax exemptions for designated beneficiaries under the One District, One Factory Program, Ghana Financial Stability Fund, and International Development Association facility of 250 million US dollars. We also know about the consideration of the President's nomination for appointment as Justices of the Supreme Court. There's also the ratification, very important, of mining lease agreement between Ghana and the Ashanti Bauxite Company Limited for the mining of bauxite in the Nyinahim Block 2 area in the Echuma Mpunia district of the Ashanti region. Then the ratification of the mining lease agreement between Ghana and Barari DV Ghana Limited for the exploitation of lithium at Isuyam. Is in the central region. Then there's also the bills, including the Environmental Protection Agency Bill 2024. Uh, really, really crucial bill because uh, that is the one that will make amendments to, to uh, stop exploration in forest areas or mining in forest areas, uh, to be precise. And then the Social Protection Bill 2023. Indeed. But one last thing before we chat about this issue or issues that have come up. The majority leader also proposes next Thursday, November 28th and Friday, November 29th, 2024, are suitable days for the emergency recall. We cannot have a chat on the back of this uh, latest development in the TAD. We should have both the South MP, uh, Dr. Clementa Park, join our conversation. In the meantime, let me bring in Samir Obeng. Samir Obeng is uh, executive director for... Uh, let me take a look at that. Executive Director of the Parliamentary Network Africa. Um, Sami, good evening to you. Thank you so much for joining us here. I know you've been waiting patiently for us. I do appreciate your patience. Um, but let's talk about this third recall. Uh, how does that come to you? Uh, what, what do you think about it? Good evening and thanks for having me. Um, I, I was particularly surprised um, that this... Um, a request was actually put through because um, anyone who watches Parliament and knows how Parliament operates, seeing that we are just um, two weeks to elections, knows that it is almost practically impossible to expect that Parliament will be able to reconvene and have any meaningful conversations before election day. And so to have the Supreme Court uh, deliver its verdict uh, about a week ago, and to have the majority leader wait for another extra week before sending in this request. And to send in this request, it, it is important to note, however, that this request is not even on the back of the emergency recall provision of the Constitution, as was used in the first two instances. But in this particular request, the leader is actually asking Mr. Speaker to exercise his prerogative as Speaker to summon the House, not necessarily through the emergency recall, summon the House regularly, which means that now it rests with Mr. Speaker, you know, so to do. Mm. I, I think that practically uh, it, it's a challenge. I, I really do not see how uh, it's possible to get members of Parliament leaving their constituencies mm -hmm. and coming to Accra to sit at a time when about 80% of them are seeking re-elections and they know the risk of what will happen in their respective constituencies if they leave uh, 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 without necessarily campaigning in the next couple of days. Mm, I see. And uh, if, if by explanation this is left at the discretion of the Speaker, do you expect the Speaker at this point to reconvene the House? 
Well, considering the logistics required, considering the timing in which we are, considering the experiences of the speaker, considering the situation we find ourselves in, I really do not think that practically uh, we should expect a, a recall of the House. I've always maintained that Parliament's mandate, the eighth Parliament's mandate, expires on the midnight of G uh, January 6th, which means that even after elections, if Parliament is minded so to do, it can still have up to about one full month, which can do a lot of the many things that Parliament has on its agenda before this current eighth Parliament, you know, uh, has its tenure expiring. Mm -hmm. I really do not see Parliament coming back before elections, but I think that there is a lot that can be done after elections and before the Parliament gets re dissolved. I mean, and by that, you know, it, it pops up the question, uh, why the rush? Why at this very crucial time when a lot of the members of parliament are on the field uh, campaigning? When you think around that, what comes up for you? Well, it's difficult to note. And I think that perhaps the majority leader uh, will be best placed to answer this. But I honestly think that if this was put in place uh, much earlier, you know, I mean, the, the, we've had the Supreme Court's verdict. Uh, mind you, his, his petition is literally hinged on the Supreme Court's verdict. We've had the verdict for almost one full week, you know, so why would we have one week literally wasted, so to speak, you know, before making in this this request? Could it also be that this, the, the leader has been trying to engage with the speaker on the back uh, and, and he's not having any results from the backroom conversations and so now needs to make it official so that he can have the, the, the benefit of, you know, the paper trail to be able to show for it. Uh, there, there are so many angles that we will not be able to answer. Perhaps we need to find out more detail about this from the majority leader. But I question the practicality of parliaments coming to sit before elections. Sami, will the NPP cuckers and the majority leader have themselves to blame if this emergency recall request is not granted? I think that the route, the approach, the strategy, you know, Parliament is as much about the standing orders, the orders of Parliament, as it is also about strategy, you know, because, you know, it's a house of, 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 of politics, it's a house that records matter, it's a house that rules matter, and you have to have a combination of all of these to be able to get the kind of results that you, you, you require. I... I, I really will be surprised if the majority leader in this particular request uh, was expecting or will be expecting anything extraordinary to happen before elections. Mm, I see. And, and listen, you, you talk about the fact that um, there is that transitional, uh, excuse me, not transitional period, but, you know, the period after the voting uh, after December 7th, they have a full month until uh, the, the uh, you know, parliament uh, expires on January 6th, midnight. Uh, could it be the, the case that the majority leader perhaps is worried about activities that could take place within that transitional period? Well, I'm wondering uh, where, which, which one, you know, makes for a better timing for uh, engagement by a group of people who have majority of them needing to seek re-elections, whether it is the period before elections or the period after elections, which, yes, understandably, will have activities such as the Christmas, holidays, and what have you. But we've seen parliaments sitting on Saturdays. We've seen parliaments sitting on Mondays when push comes to show. And, and for me, I think that that is the more practical approach that should be looked at. Mm, I see. And, and, you know, there will also be the matter of certain places again, I mean, so to speak, if Parliament reconvenes or even if everything ends and they come back after the December 7th uh, polls to, to uh, the, the chamber, I, I, I mean, what do you foresee? Do you see us go back to what we have seen in the last three, four weeks, or you, you have different expectations of, of the members of Parliament? So far as I'm concerned, until the matter... Uh, that was uh, ruled on by the Supreme Court is challenged through a review. I, I believe that the matter is really settled. And, and for me, my expectation would be that upon Parliament coming back, whether it's before elections or after elections, depending on when Mr. Speaker recalls the House, Mr. Speaker has a responsibility to make that announcement for the purpose of the records, you know, to reflect that this is uh, the ruling that has been probably served on him as a speaker from the Supreme Court, and the consequence of the ruling is that the status quo prior to all of these disturbances is reverted to. 
and 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 I know that uh, with the experience of Mr. Speaker and the experiences also of the parliamentary service, the clerks and all of that that supports the Speaker in the discharge of his duties, these should be uh, uh, issues that they should settle on once the House gets reconvened. I mean, we can only hope that we do not see a repeat of what we have seen in the last few weeks, that some consensus is reached that the problem of seat, uh, you know, certain places there is dealt with. But I do appreciate you staying up to talk to us on Ghana tonight. Thank you so much. Sami Obey is Executive Director for the Parliamentary Network Africa. Uh, we've been discussing uh, the latest development from the NPP caucus in Parliament. Uh, we know that the member of Par the member of Parliament for Efutu and the Majority Leader Alexander Peño Marking has written for the third time to the Speaker of Parliament to recall the House to consider what they have described as urgent and crucial matters, uh, uh, you know, regarding government business. And we, we have taken you through what those government businesses are, uh, you know, bills that need to be looked at, social protection bill, environmental protection bill. We know that some uh, mining agreements uh, with Barari DV would also have to be looked at. Uh, one that has to do with uh, Ashanti Mining, bo uh, Bauxite Mining Company will also have to be looked at. And so it's a host of things that need to be discussed before the eighth parliament expires. Now, uh, Sami, on the other hand, that's, is not as optimistic as uh, Alexander Peño Makin is uh, in making that request. He says he does not see how the speaker will recall the House particularly uh, given his reasons, including the fact that the members of parliament are all over the country campaigning in their constituencies. But how about, how about we speak to one of them? Peter Nochukotoy is ranking member on parliament's education committee. He's also member of parliament for Akachi North. And I want to pick his thoughts on it just before we go on to some other matters to do with his committee. Uh, Peter, good evening, honorable. Thank you so much for joining us here. But uh, the... Member of Parliament for Efutu and the majority leader is asking that you all come back to the parliament to 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 the chamber to discuss parli uh, government business and parliamentary business, so to speak. What are your thoughts on that? Are you coming back, or this is absurd? Well, thank you very much, and uh, good evening to you. Um, I've been in the constituency for some time now, and I am yet to get that information from my leadership. So I don't know what the situation is now. Well, he, he's, he's, I am not aware for now. I, well, I can tell you for a fact that uh, the Efutu MP, MP Alexander Penyomaki, has written to the Speaker again that he wants Parliament to be reconvened uh, to look at those bills and those agreements that this eighth Parliament needs to sit on t for, for government business to be looked at. Uh, what, what are your thoughts, really? Well, as I said, I am yet to get any information to that effect. Oh, is that so, to say you don't believe yeah. the information I'm giving you? I know, I've not received any information. But I'm telling you and, for uh, a fact that that is what is going on. Will you leave your constituency and come, come to Accra to sit? No, I'm in my constituency and I, I don't think uh, uh, it's necessary now to recall parliament. So uh, I don't know the part of it and... Uh, Unless I see a someone from the speaker, I will be unable to speak to it. 